Hey, what's up? Today we're speaking about the SPL Ion. It's one of the most requested videos that I have on my channel. And for a good reason, the SPL Ion is a very famous compressor. I think because of its looks and also because of the SPL branded plugin by Plugin Alliance, many people know the SPL Ion and they want to know what the actual hardware sounds and looks like. Let's start from the beginning. The SPL Ion is a variable mu tube compressor and that's where I think it is important to understand what variable mu means. Instead of like for example VCA or FET compressors, you don't have a ratio setting. Instead you are determining the amount of compression by driving the input stage. The harder you go into the SPL Ion, the more compression you have. Honestly, the variable mu technology took me some time to understand because I came from the background of using ratio settings. Using a four to one, eight to one, and then I have my sort of like harder compression or I go to a two to one or one to one with no compression, but that's not how variable mu works. Instead, you are driving always a certain amount into the input stage and then you know, okay, if I drive it harder now, I get more compression out of it. Apart from the variable mu concept, the SPL ion is very easy to understand and to navigate. We have our two sides, we have left and right, of course. We have our big threshold knobs at the center, really lovely to touch and it feels just amazing. I mean, it's something that I know now from from SPL, their build quality is just magnificent and the iron is no difference. Then we have the most important section for me, as I said, and that's the input and output section down at the bottom. Here you find the input and output trim. Um, like I said, you have the trims and these can, these can either be uh, minus or positive so it either can be a negative or a positive trim or you can take it out and put it into the middle position and then you have a zero which equals no trim and you can do the same for the output section so that's the first thing you know logically you would you know go for for a certain setting and then you would set that to the to the output as well so you can always have this like makeup gain where you don't get tricked by listening to a very loud compression. So you can use that to your advantage. Then something that I really enjoy is the positioning of the tube bias down here. So you have the tube bias and if you increase the tube bias, you get more saturation and distortion. I would describe it at, at that. And that's really, really handy for certain sounds. Then we have something called the auto bypass and the auto bypass um, that's just one of SPL's things. You can actually set an auto bypass so the auto bypass will then just like switch between the compressed and uncompressed signal and then you can close your eyes and you can can't trick yourself by oh now I'm in the engaged mode. Uh, in the engaged mode and now it should be sounding better. No, no, you can actually say that the iron should be auto bypass its setting you know and you can hear that clicking clicking noise so it's it's pretty pretty cool um when it's uh, when it activates or switches the settings that's really cool then you have in the middle position the air base and the tape roll off the air base of course you know makes that nice smiley curve increasing the low end and the high end makes a lot of sense for dull sounding recordings where you need some more excitement. Then I would use the airbase. Tape roll off is a classic emulation of a tape roll off, um, meaning you take out the uh, the highs a little bit, you know, with a smooth curve, and that can be really useful for modern productions where you have a lot of high end content and it. It's really annoying and it takes up so much energy from the general mix and also it takes away from the interesting part you know that's something that I I realized a lot um, especially when you have a vocal recording and then you then the drummer hits and everything is just 
so overblown with high-end materials that you are just distracted, um, then the tape roll-off is really great. It's also cool for recording. So when I have a drum machine that has some annoying high-end frequency up above like 12k it's really good to make to use that tape roll off it just gives a nice nice smooth curve to it so i take that to bypass now then we have the section that many people really yeah struggle with and i think that's the rectifier section Many people thought because the, the labeling of these sections is, you know, like silicon and, and uh, stuff like that, that it's actually different circuitries. But what it's actually doing is it's giving you different time constants for the attack and release time. So if I go to silicon, which is like my uh, starting point most of the time, then you have different attack and release settings for the both sides of the compressor if you activate link if you just use it for the one side then of course it's just for the one side so actually what's what's not happening is you don't have a different circuitry it is just different settings for the attack time i think that's where many people thought oh my gosh it sounds so different with the different rectifiers again that is due to the input sensitivity of the ion. Variable mu means that you increase or decrease the compression by the input setting. And logically, if you have a fast or slow attack, that means that you also have more faster or more slower compression, which can also increase like the saturation, so to say. You know, so you, you think that you would actually hear more, more distortion or something, but it's actually more compression that is happening. I hope I describe that um, understandably. And this is what, what's actually happening. So people thought, oh, this is, this is the other rectifier. This sounds more saturated. Oh, no, this is the one. Actually, it's just time constants. The circuit board and, and everything is, is the same. Understand, you have your section, you have the threshold, you have the input section, and then you have this rectifier section that, that affects both the attack and the release time. And you have the sidechain. So you have the, like this triangular fashion up here. And then you have at the bottom the input and the output trim that you can then, you know, modulate by using the threshold. All right, now to the good part. I've explained a lot. Let's listen to the SPL Ion. Let's go. What you can see now is even though I'm not pushing the iron that much, just because I'm sending level into the iron, it already is compressing. You know, that's, that's pretty interesting. I've decreased the input and just sometimes you have to look at the values, you know, what's going on. You know, if I would take it out now, you can see it's actually getting louder. Still a little bit. Okay. Let me show you first the air bass and tape roll off. Because I, th I think that's where you can hear the most difference up front. So this is air bass. Get this nice shimmer, interesting bass. Same is true for tape roller. For this recording, it sounds a little bit dull. It's not something that I would use in this particular recording, but still, it can work for some recordings. And again, the air bass. puts a nice definition and touch to it. 
let's play a little bit now with a threshold, you know. I'm, by the way, in the link mode, so everything that is happening at the right-hand side will also be applied to the left-hand side. So take a look at the view meter. And that's how I would use it, actually. This is something that just works for me. It, it works, you know? It's a smooth compression. It's fast, yes, but it works on this track, especially in combination with the airbase. Yeah, for me, it's something I really enjoy. Take a more faster approach now. Puts the kick drum more into the center for me. Let's listen back. very fast but still smooth compression for me it just works on those really smooth subtle settings it has that nice curve can go down a little bit more and that's what I would use it for you know I completely have given up looking into the manual and then just checking out the different values why you know just listen to what's going on i have the view meter so i get a good estimate on what the iron is doing sometimes it's just all about listening Okay, now we get some pretty obvious compression. It's driving, it's, it's a little bit of pumping, but still you have that nice groove, everything is there. Let's check out the tube bias. So we're at low, mid, and now let's try out the high tube bias. More drive, you know, <laughs> actually I'm compressing now like a lot. Okay, let's go back to low and back to high. No really nice, creamy, just... Especially the, the clap sounds get a little bit more, how can I say that, more, more fatness and more roundness. Listen to that. And even though it's a little bit on the aggressive side right now, you can tame it, right? So make it a parallel setting, right? I could go now to the, to the Hermes that I have and just dial it in. So let's try that out maybe. Let's give it a go.
go now to my hammers on the right hand side you can, can't see that but I use now the parallel mix and I just put it in so we're now at 100% and I put it to 50 and here you can hear what's going on right so I'll put it back up yeah, and we're back. And now I put it back to like a 50% compression. Put it out. And back in. That's the magic of the iron for me. Let's put it back up to 100. That's the magic of the iron for me. It's those really interesting, nice compression that I get. Let's play a little bit around with the rectifiers. When I play around with the rectifiers, I think you understand more the intended purpose of the rectifiers. I won't change the attack time or the release time. Let me play around with the settings. I'm now at the rightmost position and then I go to silicon in the middle. Let me take out air base for now. You can hear, you know, I compress very much, you know, I compress a lot. You know, you can see that with the VU meters, I'm compressing quite a lot. But still, it, it works. It, it's not sounding destroyed or it gets artifacts. It actually sounds really, really, really nice. If I decrease the input, then you see that I even increase the compression. You hear that? Maybe I go to like back to my six and I take out the input track. Maybe let's see if I if I overdrive. And you hear that I'm Pressing even more. Sorry, I'm taking out the the input tray. Gets louder, of course, but it's also more compressed because obviously I'm driving the input stage more. But I like the way that it sounds when I'm decreasing the input. I don't know. It sounds for me way more natural really, really nice. Just let's go back to the low tube bias and also check out the settings again without the input trim. totally works for me. It just has that lovely sound, that lovely tone. Maybe checking out one of, one of the EQ curves, but I'm going back to my setting at first. The million dollar question now is, how does the SPL iron sound? If I 
would have to describe it, I would say, very, very smooth. The first time I was using the iron and I was activating it, I was kind of like, hmm, interesting. Nothing is really happening here. I see that the needle is a little bit moving, but hmm, let's check it out. And I was using the threshold settings and I was playing a little bit uh, around with it. Of course, airbase, you heard it immediately. It was giving you that smiley curve. Everything was cool. But I was checking everything and then I was taking it out of the mix. And I was like, oh, wow. I got a really smooth, wide sound from the iron. And once I put it out and bypassed it, everything fell together again. If you work with the iron and you don't push it too much, you get a very smooth, very enjoyable curve, a lot of depth. It starts to widen your whole mix and the sound that you're using. That's where I see the iron. I don't see the iron as, a, as an aggressive tool. It's, it's, a, it's a shiny pleasure maker for me, if that word is correct. The iron works for me in a concept, in a, in a, in a mixing chain. It's great on vocals, it's great on bass, uh, on single sounds, it's absolutely amazing. But if people uh, would like to use it as an aggressive master bus compressor, I would say that's where I don't see the, the iron. I see it as a, as a really nice tool to embrace uh, a wide and spacious uh, mixing. I saw some videos and also some audio demos where the sound was really like falling together. It was like, like, very mid-rangey and I, I had the feeling that sometimes the the sound was like kind of stressed out. I was talking to a lot of people um, that had the SPL iron and they said yeah because they are driving the input stage too much. Let it relax. Use the input and decrease the input trim by like six or eight. Once you are actually decreasing the input gain and you're starting to use two to four dB of gain reduction in the VU meters, you're actually getting that really nice gelling sound, a very wide sound, a very relaxed sound, a very organic musical sound. This also answers the question for many people, I believe, if I would go for the Ion or the Phoenix. They are completely different. The Ion, as I said, is very smooth. It's a compressor that I would use to give a more beautiful sound to something. The Phoenix on the other end has that lovely smack that I adore. It has that really nice pump to it, that smack to it. It has that dirtiness, that grittiness sometimes if I drive it really, really hard. I love that about the Phoenix. So the Phoenix and the Ion, they can sit next to each other. They are completely different beasts to me. I hope that answers your question regarding that topic. Final conclusion. The SPL Ion is a compressor that teaches you to actually listen to input levels. Rather than focusing on static settings, I use it for organic materials and materials where I know I can work with certain input values. It teaches you a lot about dynamics and you get a good ear for different settings. It's a very beautiful machine and I know that SPL is going to follow the, the idea of the iron in, in future products and I'm looking really forward to listen to them. So that's my conclusion. That's my final review of the SPL Iron. If you have any questions, of course, write them down in the comment section and I see you in the next video.